In a small town in Aurora, Nebraska, lived a young girl named Maya. Maya was well known for her unwavering faith and her gentle spirit that seemed to radiate like the love of Jesus to all who crossed her path. Maya's life was challenging because her family faced great financial difficulty. Her family lived in a state of uncertainty, but through it all, Maya held steadfast to her belief in trusting in the Lord that he would guide them through the darkest of nights. One evening, as Maya was sitting alone worrying how her family was going to make ends meet, and the burden of their finances weighed heavenly upon her, she started to briefly question whether God was going to see them through this or not. Maya closed her eyes and offered up a silent prayer, surrendering her fears to the Lord above. The following day, while Maya was wandering through the market, she came across a flyer announcing a $10,000 prize for a storytelling contest. Though hesitant at first, Maya felt a stirring in her heart that this was the path laid out before her. With unwavering determination, Maya poured her heart and soul into creating a tale that reflected her deepest beliefs and convictions. She spoke of a journey of faith, of trials overcome, and of the unwavering love of a guiding hand that never faltered. As the day of the contest approached, Maya stepped onto the stage, her hands trembling with nervous anticipation, yet as she began to weave her tale, a sense of calm washed over her and her words began to flow like a gentle stream, captivating all of those who listened. When the final applause filled the room, Maya's eyes filled with tears of joy as she was declared the winner of the contest. But it wasn't the money or the accolades that filled her with joy. It was the knowledge that she had been used as a vessel for the Lord's message of hope and trust. And so, dear friends, as Maya's story comes to an end, let us be reminded of the power of faith and the strength that comes from trusting in the Lord. For just as he guided Maya through her darkest hour, so will he light the path before us if only we have the courage to trust in his divine plan. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5-6 through 6. What does it mean to trust the Lord? Schofield notes say that trust is the characteristic of the Old Testament word for the New Testament words faith or believe. It occurs 152 times in the Old Testament and is the rendering of the Hebrew words signifying to take refuge. These next few verses are only a small handful of the number of times we are told to trust in the Lord. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. Psalm 56.3 May the Lord reward your work and your wages be full from the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to seek refuge. Ruth 2.12 He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Psalm 22.8 Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who carries out the wicked schemes. Psalm 37, 4-7 Who is among you that fears the Lord, that obeys the voice of his servant, that walks in the darkness and has no light, let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. Isaiah 50.10 Trusting in the Lord means not trusting in man's own self, in his own heart which is deceitful, or in his own works of righteousness which the Bible calls filthy rags. The Bible says, All of us have become like one who is unclean, and our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. Isaiah 64.6 Trusting in the Lord is not a profession of a religion or legalistic duties performed, but it is trusting in the Lord, the object of all grace and in Him only. Trusting in Him at all times, in times of trial and affliction, in times of temptation and suffering, His love, grace and mercy make Him deserving of that trust. What He has done for us and others should move us to this trust.
He promises that all works of grace within us will be completed. We must believe that he is able to do what he says he will. Another way of saying to trust in the Lord is saying to commit all your ways and your heart to the Lord. How to trust in the Lord. After looking at what it means to trust in the Lord, we must ask, how do we trust in the Lord? We must, with an entire submission and satisfaction, depend upon Him to perform all the things He has promised and not lean on our own understanding. In all ways acknowledge God. We must not only in our own judgment believe in God, but become His. Our life is not our own. We must seek His direction, to ask His advice, and not only when we are stuck in a situation that we feel desperate in. We must be in total submission and acknowledge God with thankfulness. Those that put themselves under divine guidance shall always have the benefit of godly wisdom. Society is so far all over the morality map that people have problems trusting in anybody, much less God. People are so concerned about watching out to be wronged from the guy on the left that trust is a foreign concept. However, for Christians, this must be different. Regardless of your past, if you are a follower of Christ, you know the truth. To say that you do not have the ability to trust God must be a foreign concept. Everyone has had difficult experiences, some worse than others. But if you are truly born again, 2 Corinthians 5.17 must apply to you. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. God wants to do something very special with this new creation, but in order to be fully available to God, we must first trust Him. This is not something that comes very easy, letting anyone, much less God, handle their life. It feels natural to want to be in control, but the longer one waits, the longer they keep God from producing the long-lasting fruit He truly desires. Trusting in the Lord is one of the most important things we have to do on this earth and in this life. But in order to do that, we must be fully available to Him. This means dying to ourselves daily and putting His needs before our own. Thank you for watching. If you got anything out of this video, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because it's the only way to get these videos in front of more eyes. Thank you for watching.